Hi everyone, it's Ashley with Merle Norman Cosmetics in Eniac and Buffalo Grove. Today I wanted to talk about something that is going to be very important for us as we move and shift into the new phases of um, shelter in place and out of our homes and into our everyday living. And that is makeup that works really well when you're wearing your face mask. So if you've noticed, that your makeup is transferring onto your face mask, which really happens a lot. I have worked diligently to find the products that will work bat the best at making sure that that does not happen. So to begin with, we wanna have a foundation that's not gonna move and that is transfer resistant. And luckily we have one. It is our lasting foundation. This is um, a long wearing foundation. It wears up to seven hours. It's transfer resistant and it's formulated with pro retinol. So it's really great for anyone that struggles with fine lines and things of that nature. Typically, I recommend this foundation for anyone that struggles with a lot of oiliness on their skin. But I have found that mixing a little bit of our our um, lasting foundation with any of our liquid foundations, so CC Cream, Perfecting, Aqua Balance, Timeless, works perfectly at making sure that that foundation wears longer and is also more transfer resistant. So I am gonna kind of show you how to do that using my Perfecting Foundation. So I'm just gonna use a little pump of Perfecting Foundation on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to come in with just a small amount of the lasting foundation. And then something that you might wanna do is play around with the ratio. So do you want a full pump of your um, perfecting foundation and just a little squirt of your um, lasting or do you wanna do more lasting and less perfecting? It's really up to you. The only foundation that I have found is gonna change just a little bit is going to be timeless. So our timeless foundation is so beautiful and it is has colloidal gold in it. So it really gives you this beautiful all over glow, almost like you've just had a facial. So I have noticed that when I mix in the lasting foundation, that glow is just a little bit minimized. And that's because our lasting foundation is a full on matte foundation. So that does kind of change the the look of your last of your timeless just a little bit. So I have both foundations there. I'm going to take my um, foundation paddle brush and kind of swirl them around so they kind of are mixed in together. And I'm just going to apply it like I normally would a foundation. So the one thing also with our lasting foundation is because it is long wearing, it does kind of dry a little bit fast um, after applying. So you do kind of want to work a little quickly and kind of have an idea of um, where you're going next with that foundation. So I'll obviously I always start in the center of my face where I need the most coverage. And then I work my way out to my outer edges of my face. So I started working on my eyes a little bit so I could save us a little bit of time in the video. So I have um, my eyeshadows and my eyeliner on um, and my concealer. But you can kind of see that it really gives a beautiful um, finish with the two mixed together. So this is gonna be more of a medium to full coverage um, formula now that I've added the lasting foundation to perfecting, which is perfecting is about mm, light to medium coverage, I would say, mostly. Um, so it is gonna give me a little bit more coverage because of that lasting. But that's okay, right? We can always use a little coverage. All right, so that's on. And then you just, it's really pretty much dried and ready to go. I'm gonna take a sponge and just kind of buff off the edges a little bit into my hairline. So the next step is going to be using our Ultra Powder Foundation. So Ultra Powder Foundation is a foundation and powder in one and it absorbs oil. So I have found that this works really well on top of the lasting foundation and my mixture with perfecting um, so that when I have my mask on, it allows, it's setting my makeup and it's also helping absorb any oils and a little bit of, um, 
I guess it's condensation. So when we're wearing our masks for a long time and we're breathing and talking and things of that nature, a little bit of that um, condensation kind of collects and it really helps kind of absorb that. I've also found that this helps if you have really sensitive skin, um, it helps kind of buffer, give a little bit of a buffer zone between your mask and your skin. So I'm coming in with a powder brush into the lasting or into the uh, ultra powder. You could use the sponge if you wanted to, um, and that would also give you a little bit more coverage as well. And using a setting powder like ultra powder foundation also is going to help um, blur fine lines and things of that nature. So using a powder is really great. Okay, and that's it. Pretty easy. So my foundation is set. It is not going to move. It's not going to transfer onto my mask or anything of that nature, and it's going to wear all day. So this is also a great tip for as we come into those warmer months and the humidity and things of that nature, that if you're finding that um, your foundation is just wearing off before noon, um, putting in a little bit of the lasting foundation into your foundation is going to help that not happen, or we can trans transition you over to um, lasting foundation and you can wear that all just alone by itself um, in the summer months too. So the next thing is blush. So I was practicing and practicing and I found that our liquid blush really works the best because it is smudge resistant and fade resistant and transfer resistant. But because I was practicing so much with different techniques, I used it all up. So I don't have any to show you, but I did pull out our cheek crayon and it's gonna kind of give the same effect um, and kind of the same technique that I showed. The only only downside is that our cheek crayon doesn't have that smudge resistance um, like the liquid blush, but it'll still work because it's a cream. So I am using Pink Lotus and I'm gonna put a little on my cheeks there. And that's kind of what you would do with the liquid blush. Um, the great thing about liquid blush is it comes with um, a doe foot applicator. So you could put just a few little drops on your cheekbone and then kind of blend that in. You could use your finger and kind of dab. You could use um, a sponge. You could even use our foundation brush. Let me get that for you this foundation brush, which would really help at um, blending as well and kind of diffusing that color. And then the next step for your blush is to come in with one of our um, lasting cheek color colors. I'm gonna use Sugar Melon and these are the powders. These are the ones that come in those compacts. And um, you're gonna go right on top of your liquid blush, or in my case, the cheek cream. And this is gonna give you extra stain power. It's also going to kind of give you a little bit more of a pop of color if you want it. And the great thing about cheek crayon and liquid blush really is you can apply it in so many different ways. So you can apply it on top of foundation and powder. You could apply it underneath your foundation and powder if you wanted just like a, like a, a, like a glow from within. So any of those um, are going to work for you. And I'm going to come in with my powder brush and just kind of Make sure I don't have any of that powder wearing off. We're gonna be smudging. Okay. So with eyes, that's my next step for you, is with your eyes, because half of our face is hidden, we really wanna play up our eyes. So I have found that the best techniques are to have something shimmery on your lid and to keep your, um, your crease neutral and um, also playing up with color. So if you have some fun earrings on, or if you have like a really fun col colorful top, play up those shades with your eye makeup. So today I just kept it kind of neutral. I used our Knockout Nudes 2 palette. I used um, Silver Champagne, which is gonna be, which is on my lid. I kept it really shimmery because you do want some shimmer on your lid so that you can really play up your eyes. I then came into Misty Rose 
rows into my um, uh, crease and my outer V and I actually worked that color a little bit higher past my crease because if you notice when half our face is hidden we want to make sure our eyes are nice and bright and wide awake so um, I really kind of brought that up and you can kind of see there's a little bit of difference it kind of makes my eyes a little bit more wide awake um, and more present on my face and then I came in with um, topaz and I deepened my crease and my outer V with that and before all of that, I used Almond Cookie Shadow Stick because Almond Cookie has um, a primer in it. And so not only does this color kind of neutralize any discoloration on my lids, but that primer is not going to move at all. So my shadows aren't gonna crease, they're not gonna fade, they're not moving. So then I came in with our Soft Touch Eye Pencil in Copper Eyes. So I'll get a little bit close. I think you can kind of see some of that shimmeriness. And I really wanted to play up the shimmery tones. Um, and Soft Touch Eye Pencil, once it adheres, it doesn't move. And using those colors are really important to do as well because you really want to draw attention to your eyes. Um, so you could play up your eye colors. You could do, um, you could work with the color wheel. You could do opposite. So like a um, like a peach and a blue, you could do something like that. That really kind of plays up your eyes, fun eyeliners, fun colors on your lids as well. Um, we actually sent out an email. So if you're on our newsletter, um, you got our email and we gave a couple great ideas on how you can play up your eyes while wearing a face mask. And we went through each step of this. So if you're not getting our emails, um, drop your email below or um, direct message us with your email and I'll make sure to add you so you can get the email from today. Okay, so the um, that's all finished. The next step is mascara. So again, we are really pl uh, playing up our eyes and um, a lot of us have not gotten um, our lash extensions completed in quite a while because we haven't been able to do that. Or maybe you were thinking about dabbling into extensions and you haven't been able to do it because everything's been closed or you're tired of wearing strips um, or you just have never really dabbled in that and you love wearing mascara. Um, there is a new technique that I want to show you. Um, that's really easy to do and it only requires two products. So it's our mascara primer and any of our mascaras. So the first step is you could put our mascara primer on your lashes and then you can put mascara on top and that's going to give you longer lashes. It's going to give you a little bit more um, depth and a little bit more curl. However, I have found, and this is my favorite way of wearing it is you're going to put on a layer of mascara, a layer of primer, and then another layer of mascara. I have found that Wicked and Fat Lash work the best. Fat Lash is really going to give you a lot of volume and drama to your lashes. So if you wanted something that's more every day, I would go with Wicked. So I'm going to put a little Wicked on my lashes. They're curled and they're ready for mascara. And I love our primer because um, not only does it give our lashes some um, assistance in curl and length and things of that nature, but if you do apply it directly to your lashes, um, it has a lot of um, conditioners in it. So it's really good at keeping your lashes soft and fluttery and not becoming brittle. So it's kind of like a, a conditioner for your lashes. And you want to make sure that you're also um, applying mascara to your bottom lash line um, because it actually makes your eyes look wider awake to play up those lower lashes. So layer one of Wicked Lash is on. I'm now going to come into the mascara primer. It is white, but it dries clear. So you put your mascara primer on top of that Wicked. And 
and then you'll really see a difference. I probably should have just done one eye so you could see the difference. Maybe I'll make a post about that in a picture and then you can really kind of see the difference. All right, coming back into Wicked. So this is my third layer. So Wicked, Primer, and Wicked. Pretty cool, huh? So this is gonna make your lashes seem thicker individually longer and the primer really does help give some hold um, to that mascara and Wicked really is um, smudge free, smudge proof. So there you go. You have some um, great lashes to go with your mask. Kind of show the difference, right? Those eyes are really popping. And then I started doing my brows. So the, the style for brows in 2020 is gonna be strong, polished, structured brows. So this trend before was fluffy brows, kind of wild looking kind of brows, and now they're gonna be strong, structured, and polished. So I began using the brow sculpting pencil and really just kind of filled them in and made sure that I had a really great um, kind of structure to them. And now I'm gonna come in to our brow gel and I'm actually using the shade light brown. So it comes in a couple different shades and also comes in clear. Um, so I am going to use light brown and I'll kind of show you the brush that you use with this. It has like a keyhole kind of look to it. Can you kind of see that? So there's shorter bristles on the top and longer bristles on the bottom. And so you can kind of use those shorter bristles to kind of fill in and give your brows some more um, shading. And then you can come back with those longer bristles and brush through your brow hair to really give um, some structure. What I like about the brow gel is it has flexible hold. So your brows are really going to just kind of stay in place for quite a while as well. So again, I'm really looking for uh, products that we have that were transfer resistant, fade resistant, smudge resistant, and had and long wearing. So there you go. There are some brows to go with those eyes. And then last but not least, because half of our face is covered, we won't be wearing lipstick for a while, and that's okay, right? We can play up those eyes, um, but you wanna make sure that you are protecting your lips even though you are wearing a mask because they can dry out and things of that nature. So that is where our lip conditioner comes in handy. So I'll put a little lip conditioner on. It's gonna keep my lips nice and hydrated all day long, and I am all set. So I'll put my mask on and kinda show you the difference and you can kind of see, it's all about eyes. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry this is kind of a long video. Um, feel free to drop a question or a comment below or your email if you'd like to get our newsletter from today. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.